Hello, in this video I will show you the new features of the upcoming JFERN release 4.1.0. JFERN is a Petronet framework which allows you to create, execute and simulate Petronets. The version 4 will be placed inside the SourceForge project under that link, that URL. If you go to the JFERN project you can simply click on view all files and there you can download the latest distribution. Currently the distribution is only available in CVS and it's already placed in the SourceForge, SourceForge uh, JFRON project. So you can download it uh, using, your, uh, using the CVS repository. I have the source is in my workspace, so I'm gonna just simply go there. Um, to build the executable jar, you simply say and jar, and the file will be placed inside a lib directory. The lib directory contains all the necessary uh, dependencies, such as Kawa. Uh, JRio and um, Closure. So to execute a JFERN, you say Java jar JFERN. Because all the other uh, dependencies are already in that directory, the manifest file specifies to pick the appropriate jar files, and you don't need to specify the class path for anything. So this is the integrated environment for creating your Petronets. We're gonna create a new Petronet which is by default named Untitled2. Those are all the properties of our new Petronet. We can rename it to a demo closure see the name change straight away and we have to change the name of the inscription language which we will use by default JFERN uses Java which is statically typed and quite long we can use bin shell, kawa or closure so we specify closure and from now on we can use closure as our inscription language. I'm gonna draw a simple Petronet with one transition, one input place and one output place. I'm gonna connect the input place with the transition via an arc and connect the transition to the output place via an output arc. JFRN has a number of inscriptions. As, norm, as all Petronets do. Uh, the input arc expression selects a binding of tokens from the input place and we do have to use Java for that inscription. Uh, there is a simple API for specifying the name variables like X in, in that case which specifies that we want a single variable X being available in the context of that transition. X will be bound to a single token from the input place. Um, this is the only Java inscription which re remains. All the other inscriptions in our Petronet can be written in pure closure. Uh, we don't want all tokens to be uh, bound to X. We want to specify certain conditions. By default, the conditions are specified in a guard of a transition or an ex input arc. Input arc. Um, we, the default guard says that as soon as there is more than one token, we do enable the binding to happen. We will modify it and we will use um, a condition specifying that we want 
x to be bigger than 0. So we are only interested in positive numbers. We want to, we need to specify an additional condition uh, saying that x is a number. So first we will check whether the token type is a number and then whether it um, passes that second condition. So this is our condition for our input arc. We want, if, if that's, that condition is met, all we want is for x to be passed to the output place. In Java, again, we write it by passing the entire multiset of bound tokens. Um, in Clojure, it is a little bit simpler. We can just say x. So we want x to go to the output place. Um, inside the transition, we can specify some action code in Clojure. So in our case, we will simply print x to the terminal. And this is the terminal I'm, I'm using right here. To fold the inscriptions, you have to press Alt key and double click on the inscriptions. They fold into mnemonic descriptions. G is for the guard, A for an action, E for expression. Double click to un unfold it again. All right, once we have our Petronet ready, we're gonna save it. So we will save it. Um, save the Petronet under the name demo and the second time around it asks us to save the layout file. We say use the same name demo. The appropriate extensions will be attached by the editor. Um, the Petronet is the same, but I can lay out uh, it in a various ways and save different lay layouts under different names and then use them. Um, so that's why the layouts are stored in a separate file, whereas the logic of the Petronet is stored in just the Petronet file. So now, once I've edited a new Petronet, I have to resync the editor's perspective of what the Petronet is into the internal JFEN representation. So I have to resync the net handle. Once the net handle is resynced, what it means is that what I see in the editor here has been compiled into internal representation of the simulator and I can interactively simulate this, that Petronet which I just have here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a token and the first token will be just a string. So the input place contains now a single token, which is a string token, and the output place doesn't contain any tokens. We will run the simulation, which is trying to run a single step bound one token to enable the transition and run it. Because of the condition, the string token which we have here is not passing the, the guard, therefore the transition is not enabled. We're gonna add another token. We see here that the number has to be bigger than zero, so let's say we will add a token which is value, which is a number value 10. So now I have two tokens, one is text type and another one is a number and I'm gonna run the simulation again a single step of of the execution. You see the color of the transition changes. White means that the transition is enabled then uh, the orange type uh, specifies that a given uh, event occurs. If, if the orange occurs in that input place, that means that the token is being taken out of the input place. If it occurs on the output place, that means the token is being placed in the output place. And if it occurs inside the transition, that means the transition is being executed. And the code has been executed correctly. The token 10 has been printed. 
and now the output place contains token 10. Let's run it again. Let's add a new token value 20. So we have again two tokens, a string token and token 20. And we're gonna run the simulation again. Observe the changes of the color and the printout which occurs in the terminal window when the action is being executed. So now the token is being taken from the input place, action is being executed, token is being placed into output place, and when the action was executed we had 20 being printed here. Um, so this works quite well. What happens if we would like to have uh, if we would like to consume a token and then generate new tokens into the output place. This is quite straightforward. Uh, we can modify the output expression to contain a list of more than one token. Let's say we would like to have X and double X to be um, placed into the output er, in output place. So let's try to have an expression in a closure in that form. So we basically create a list with X and double X. Uh, what happens if we add a new token whose value is 50? and we run that net again. Action is executed, 50 is being printed, and we are missing the second token. Uh, the reason why is the reason why we are missing the second token is because I haven't re-synced the, the patronet. So I modified the inscriptions but I haven't updated the internal representation for the simulation. So I have to resync the net handle. And let's remove the token 50 from the output place. Another useful feature is the delay which you observe um, between the token being taken, the action being executed and token being placed here can be reduced by default each operation of adding a token, removing a token and executing an action has a thousand milliseconds of delay. If I reduce that number to just one millisecond then all actions of adding tokens, removing tokens and running the simulation will be much faster. So let's add a token 50 again. I have now two tokens our original string token and number 50 and I'm gonna run a simulation without any delays so a single step we run much faster this time you couldn't really notice the the color changes uh, and as expected we have token 50 and a token 100 which is double 50 in the output place uh, you can write arbitrary closure code inside your output expression, your action, or your guards for the input arcs. Thank you very much and enjoy JFERN.